Welcome back to Badger Blitz TV, your Rivals.com destination for all things Wisconsin athletics. I'm Matt Perkins, joined once again by BadgerBlitz.com publisher John McNamara. Good to see you as always, buddy. Absolutely, Matt. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. I mean, I mean, having me, you're you're the boss here, so um, you know it, it, it's a mutually beneficial situation. Um, since we talked last week, Badgers got two commitments, um, uh, starting with Wilnerson Telemach, uh, a big defensive end from South Florida. Uh, he's definitely a key piece and a good win for EJ Whitlow in this class, as defensive line continues to be the consternation of. Uh, Badger recruit Knicks. Um, how did uh, how did Whitlow and the staff manage to pull him out of Opalaka, um, which is you know not a place that the Badgers necessarily traditionally win or haven't won in a while? Um, and how does he project at the next level? Yeah, a good win for like you talked about EJ Whitlow in his first year here. Uh, Wisconsin was a little late to the party. You know, they offered a little bit later in the spring and they only got him on campus once. And obviously that visit led to his uh, his commitment. I think going into June, you know, his list or top list changed quite a few times, you know, depending on, I guess, the day of the interview that someone gave with them that I guess that list you could call was fluid. Uh, but he took that official to West Virginia. I think that that official set the bar pretty high. And I think they kind of emerged as a leader. But Wisconsin gets him on campus for that second weekend. And they were able to close him out. So that's, that's a pretty big win because he was ahead on Wisconsin's board of, of a few targets. You know, a guy like Tyler Garcia, a guy like Drayden Pavey. That's not to say they are not significant players on Wisconsin's recruiting board. But they, they wanted Telemach ahead of those guys. And, uh, you know, they, they communicated that. I think that, you know, his commitment came before, you know, they got those guys up on uh, official visits for that third weekend. So, um, you know, he's a nice piece to this class. Uh, super raw, but you love the frame. You know, he's he's almost six foot six and two hundred fifty pounds. You know, you talk to his coach. Uh, he talked about, hey, you know, this guy. If he learns how to play with some leverage, he's going to be kind of scary. And, and you know, the film can kind of back that up. Um, he's still learning to play at that size. Um, but now, you know, with Whitlow, you have a guy in Telemach and you have a guy in uh, Torn Petaway who are two. You know, they're not necessarily super similar, but they are guys with high ceilings who are kind of just like these balls of clay that you're going to have to mold. You know, Petaway is a little bit further along. I would just say in his body development, you know, he's almost 285 pounds. I, I think Telemach could get there if you wanted him to, right? You know, if, if you wanted to get him in that 285, 290 range, you're able to, but if you want to try to keep some of that quickness and keep him at, you know, 270, 275 pounds, I think you can do that as well. So um, EJ Whitlow as a recruiter has been proven now with these two. Now EJ Whitlow, the coach who can develop these kind of balls of clay, like I said, will be put to the test when they get these guys on campus. I think that, um, you know, especially Telemach is a, is a really interesting win because Opelaka, if you know the South Florida at all is like, that's a, that is a really tough place to recruit out of if you're from Wisconsin, you know Um, there, it's one thing to be at one of those big, you know, I don't want to call them factory schools, but, you know, at, at a mm-hmm. American heritage at a plantation, I'm, I'm forgetting a couple of the other ones, but um, to go into Opelaka and, and win that for a guy that was, you know, obviously like a physical specimen, uh, I think is really a good sign for the staff and for Whitlow himself. Um, outside linebacker switching over to there um, is uh, Badgers got a commitment from Nicholas Clayton, Obviously, outside linebackers become one of the glamour positions on the Wisconsin defense in the last decade. Uh, this is a third outside linebacker for this class, um, along with Leteju and Brandon Ains. And uh, sort of how does he fit with those two guys and, you know, another kid from the state of Florida, not necessarily South Florida, but uh, a kid that, you know, where do you think he fits in here? Yeah, I think he is, of the three, maybe your true pass rush guy, at least early on in his career, of a guy that you say, hey, go get to the quarterback. Uh, Kind of in the same vein, I would say, is uh, Lafayette from that 2024 class of, hey, just pin your ears back and and go to get to the quarterback. Um, You know, he has that 
length and size that we talk about. I think with a lot of guys in this class, you know, he's six foot four, 215 pounds. Um, you know, he's another guy with a frame to add weight. You know, I don't think he's going to get above 250. Uh, but like I said, I think he's a true pass rusher, at least very early on in his career. You know, really good burst, really good first step, long like we talked about. So, you know, even if the sack production isn't there, I think he had three sacks as a junior. The disruption of the backfield and getting those hands in the passing lanes, I think, is huge with him. And, you know, I, I know this is a guy that Matt, Matt Mitchell went down there, Matt Steinecker went down there. And they just were kind of blown away about seeing him in person, seeing that body, you know, really good bend. They think he's flexible. They think he kind of hits on all the things that they, that they like in this class. And I think it speaks a lot to Clayton when they put him in a position of, Hey, if you commit before Jaden Woods, who is very much atop of their board at outside linebacker, really, since you could make an argument since the winter to say, Hey, look, we will take you ahead of Woods not necessarily in place of Woods. I don't want to say that, but we're willing to take your commitment ahead of Woods as a guy that we've prioritized for a very long time because we think that you are just in that same tier of talent as him. So, uh, you know, great recruiting win for Wisconsin. It looked like everything was pushing towards Florida State. Florida State had him on campus most recently for an official visit. Um, And like I said, uh, you know, something something happened, something turned where Wisconsin uh, went out in that recruitment. Um, but you can go back to his official visit when, like, the people I talked to said, we're, I think we lead for this kid. I think that Wisconsin is, is right in front. And obviously that, that kind of panned out. So, um, you know, it's, it's always good to get Florida kids. It's even better to get Florida kids when, when the Florida State wants them quite a bit. Uh, John, two key, you know, pieces here at the end of the 2025 class. So uh, let's beat a dead horse again. Uh, interior defensive line remains a key concern a key hole for the 2025 class and uh it looks like the two guys left on the top of wisconsin's board might both head to the hoosier state uh if we were sort of guessing right now it seems so where do they go from here good question i think that kate p track still needs to be mentioned uh you know i've said for for a couple weeks that you know the people i talked to and for a long time said Oklahoma, Wisconsin at the top. And I think that's still true. And those same people would, you know, if you ask them, probably say Oklahoma leads. I think the, the thing to, that stands out to me about Petrack, well, one of the things, one that he does is talk, right? So like you are getting secondhand information from him and anyone that is talking about him like I am is getting secondhand information because the guy just doesn't talk. I've, I've stopped reaching out to him, which is fine. Like, look, if that's your thing as a recruit and you don't want to talk to to me, that, that's completely fine. So I don't want to paint that as something that's bad. That's just the choice that he's made, which, again, completely fine. You do you do what you'd like to do in your recruitment. Um, but, you know, if Oklahoma has been the leader and he's been on campus, why, you know, one, he's elected to take all of his, you know, all four officials in schools he wanted to see, and two, he hasn't popped for Oklahoma yet. So, you know, that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen in the next couple of days or the next couple of weeks, but I think it's encouraging for all the other three schools involved that he hasn't committed to Oklahoma yet, even though I've known that they've made significant pushes towards making that happen. And they've put some stuff on the table. I think is awfully appealing uh, for, you know, any prospect that's out there that's 17 years old. So um, we'll see what happens with that one that Wisconsin, you know, I've talked about this before. He's a no doubt guy. So if Wisconsin were to get, you know, Pavey or Garcia for some reason. And then P-Track wanted to commit a week later, they would say, you know, absolutely, we got a room, we got a spot for you in this class. So, um, you know, there's a real possibility that they get one of those three. There's a maybe stronger possibility that they don't get any. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't shock me if they just had two in this class. I know people's heads will explode if I say that. You know, how could you just have two defensive linemen in this class as the biggest position of need and, you go down the list of things, and I get that. I'm just saying it wouldn't shock me if the numbers stayed at two based on how these dominoes could fall in the next couple of days or so. I, I think that is probably the most talked about subject on the Badger Blitz boards uh, at this point, for sure. It seems like every day people are desperate for more information. Um, but I want to move ahead. Last week, we talked a little bit uh, about the non-quarterbacks in the 2026 class. Uh, this week, I want to drill down a little bit more um, on their – top target behind center who seems to be Jaron Mack at this point. Um, And so, you know, seeing that I, you know, 
I've watched the tape a little bit more, and I think he's actually a really impressive kid. And now we may not be Clint, but we are at least going to put on the tape so you guys can see what we're talking about when we uh, 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 when we talk about uh, Jaron Max. So, John, um, what, uh, in, in your opinion, sort of makes him stand out for Phil Longo? Well, I think one, you know, Longo gets get the chance to see him in person. You know, when he picked up that offer, he went during that live period and saw him throw in person. And then he also got a chance to saw see him throw in camp. And we had Seamus Rohr there, um, you know, one of our writers. And, you know, Phil Longo, one of the things that he said during that camp, you know, from Seamus was just the kind of the poise in the pocket, how, you know, the ball kind of flies off effortlessly. And I think those are things that Longo – you know, at least in these kind of, you know, open air sessions, if you want to call them that without someone breathing down your neck, you know, without the pads on, you know, that's, that's kind of important to him when the, you know, the ball kind of pops effortlessly off your hand. Um, but, you know, with, with Mock, I think that, you know, he's not a true dude threat guy, but I think he can get some stuff done with his legs. And then he's got a big live arm. I think that you can see that in some of these throws here where, you know, he can make a lot of the throws that you want to see at the level. So, uh, you know, you talk about, early targets and it's never too early to talk about quarterbacks. I mean, that's usually the domino that falls first in the recruiting class. I think Landon Locke was Wisconsin's second commit. Um, maybe Matoyer committed very early too. So, you know, these dominoes for some of the, the top tier programs in the country, a quarterback have started. It wouldn't be surprising if, if, if a guy like Mock or, you know, someone else on Wisconsin's board, things started to really heat up with them, you know, this summer and, and into the fall, if they got something wrapped up. So, um, in terms of guys that they've offered, I think Mock is the only guy that they've had on campus, and that happened just recently, and that kind of speaks to his interest level, Wisconsin's interest level in him as well. He especially has that live arm that you talked about, um, I think, on w when you watch the tape. It just flies out of his hand. Um, but – uh, so I think that, you know, obviously he's a kid to watch going forward. Uh, Badgers had a couple other 2026s uh, in town this week uh, for unofficials, obviously, um, you know, and after now that they can start officially offering 2026 kids, um, sort of who stands out to you from the group that recently passed through Madison? Yeah, I think their, their most recent camp uh, was their most productive, even though they got shut out because of the weather. You know, uh, a lot of them were just kind of forced inside the McLean Center. Uh, you know, Wisconsin handed out offers at running back to a kid from Michigan. Uh, they extended an offer to a wide receiver uh, from South Dakota, I believe. Uh, tight end, which is probably the offer that, that you know, is most intriguing, Gavin Mueller. Um, you know, he's a kid who his uncle played for Wisconsin and he's absolutely blowing up right now. And the interesting part of that is that he doesn't have any tape. So he played football kind of growing up in grade school, fell in love with basketball, kind of concentrated on that. And then, you know, talking to him, he's like, Hey, like my, my high school coach just kept pushing, pushing, pushing. So, you know, I'm going out, I'm excited to play again. And then they just kind of, put him in front of coaches that have come to the high school and, you know, he's, he's six foot five, six foot five, you know, six, four, six, five, 240 pounds. And he's a physical specimen. And, you know, he's got double digit offers right now, just based on what this kid could be. Obviously Wisconsin sees him at camp. Um, and that's the best evaluation that you can get off a kid and they offer. So, um, you know, but his recruitment, I think will continue to blow up, especially, you know, once he has three weeks of film on his, on his tape, but, Wisconsin's in a great spot right now, and I think they'll continue to be in a great spot because of, you know, the the proximity to campus. You know, he's an Illinois kid, and then the connection he's got with his uncle. Uh, his uncle's, I guess, backed up Ron Dane. I think there's a lot of guys who backed up Ron Dane during his career at Wisconsin, but you know, obviously a guy who played for the program and spoke very highly of Wisconsin, and now, you know, the Badger in a good, uh, good spot in his recruitment for that 2026 tight end. <clears throat> well, I, I think tight end will definitely be a position of note for that class um, as well as uh, because 2025, you know, sort of we, we've got Davis and looks like that's going to be it. So only one tight end a year after they take two, just a lot of, you know, and, and also to see sort of what kind of types of athletes they continue to target there because it seems like um they're going for you know a bunch of different body types at tight end so we'll see how those guys are recruited and how those guys are used uh, to keep up with all of the latest on badger recruitment and everything else wisconsin football make sure you are at badgerblitz.com um john thanks as always for uh for hopping on absolutely favorite part of my monday 
<laughs> me too. Me too. All right. That'll do it. And until next time, we'll see you in the den.